itself driven by uh, better margins. So let's bring in Mitch Tuckman, MarketRiders.com. We're talking about the markets this morning. You know, it's interesting what Charles pointed out a moment ago, right, Mitch, in some ways, is that futures were up more earlier. Maybe it was on the, I don't know if it was on the China's, Chinese data or whatever the case may be over the weekend, just bouncing back probably from the declines on Friday, and have given up some of the gains despite Ford with a big bead and, you know, lows, the conglomerate lows better than expected. Clorox uh, looks good. How do, you, how do you think the market's shaping up today? Well, I'm, at, I'm really interested, interested in seeing what it's going to do uh, because of CIT. I, I don't think that's going to be good for the market this yeah. morning, irrespective of the futures. Look, we have a market that's been held up on training wheels with, uh, with cash for clunkers and all kinds of things. And now with, the, with CIT going through bankruptcy, uh, Ford's done okay, but a lot of that was cash for clunkers. It, it's going to be an interesting week. The only uh, thing I, I would say, the only yeah. thing I would say about CIT is that we certainly saw it coming, didn't we, to 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 a large extent. So why would that hurt the markets in the short term? I've heard others, you're not the only one, say that it might um, this morning and you know for the rest of the week. But but why is that a big detriment to the market, to the stock market, when we probably had a good idea it was coming? Because I think that the ramifications of it haven't really been uh, discussed widely in the media. I don't think you've had the small business community come out and start discussing what that's going to do to their business. Uh, and then you got, you got the unemployment issue end of this week, uh, which is all related. So I, I think it's going to have a, a, a bad effect. But, you know, I'm not one that's very good at predicting the markets. Uh, so I, I wouldn't venture to tell you exactly what's going to happen. I will tell you uh, that, you know, things you and I have discussed before, Connell, is this, the VIX index. Right. Uh, VXX has continued going down, and all of a sudden okay. last week it started to really rally because people are starting to get unnerved again. And yeah. so, uh, you know, that's a, an ETF that I own, VXX, which allows me to hedge myself against what I think may be coming up here in the markets. That, that ETF is up to 48, but the VIX index itself back above 30, and a lot was made of that as kind of a fear gauge. Is that what, how people should take it, that there's more fear out there in the markets than yeah. there had been? Yeah. V v also, VIX, volume, uh, by the way, I was just going to point out before you answer, volume, a couple of people pointed this out to me, was very heavy on Friday uh, on a down day yeah. as opposed to not being as heavy on an up day the day before. Well, VXX is, a, is an exchange-traded fund which, which tracks uh, the VIX or the fear index, and it's really just made up of a bunch of, uh, of uh, put and call options. And when people start to panic, the VIX goes up, the VXX gets more expensive, and it's, uh, it's down from, from pretty major highs. So it's a hedge, right? Uh, a portfolio right. ought to have hedges in it. All right, uh, let me. So that's uh, how I look at it. Stand by, we might ask you another question or two, Mitch, but let's, uh, with Adam is here with me, let's bring Charles back in, too, because I wanted to let you have a chance at least to weigh in on all the earnings. You were saying when Clorox came out, you said, wow, that's a pretty good number. That is a pretty good number. One thing I will say, though, and I think people are getting hip to this, if you look at where uh, uh, Wall Street was on these estimates two, three months ago, they would say, okay, company's going to make 40 cents. By the time the earnings come around, that number is now 31 cents. Everyone got into this whole bunker, and I think, you know what, at a certain point, investors become hip to this. That's how you get whisper numbers and things like that. And that's when you get these beats. They don't really mean as much as you think they should mean. Uh, and I, I, think, I think there's becoming a major distrust, if you will, between investors and these, and these consensus a, uh, estimates. You worried all, though, about the revenue number? I mean, coming right in on target right there? Yeah, I mean, that's a prime example, too. You know, I mean, we talked about the need to sort of break, the, you know, leap over the revenue numbers. I mean, they, look, they have solid products, liquid plumber, formula 409, and things like that. It's a solid company that, that uh, should do very well. By the way, investors are buying this one on Friday. This stock was actually up Friday on stronger than average volume. So a lot of people thought they would beat, but that gets back to my point. When you start sandbagging on these estimates, then when you actually start getting these numbers, it takes away some of the credibility from it. Yeah. What, what um, and we'll let Mitch maybe talk a little bit more about it, but he brought up this VIX uh, phenomenon where it's spiking higher again in, in the um, volatility readings, and it seems like people are a little bit more antsy. Well, the Dow uh, in the last seven sessions, uh, triple digit moves in six of them. So six out of seven. Six yeah. out of seven. So there's, there's no doubt people are becoming extraordinarily antsy. And I think this all goes back to one of the things I'm seeing on the, on the chat this morning, a lack of confidence. Mitch used the word fear. I think fear might be a byproduct of that lack of confidence. Well, Mitch, when, when we uh, were approaching 10,000 uh, the other day last week, do you think people just don't trust it? They don't think that this is real? Well, look, <laughs> as things move up, uh, it leaves uh, less room to continue moving up and more room to continue moving down, particularly 
when you have an economy that's that's very very shaky so I just think uh, people are starting to take some money off the table uh, I know you know our software has been, been encouraging investors to rebalance meaning trim some of the gains particularly in emerging markets and things like that I mean the right. Dow has been great but emerging markets have been phenomenal and uh, you know it's time to uh, if you want to really buy low sell high you got to do things that are hard to do like trim equities and buy things like long-term bonds and things like that that have not been doing as well. All right, so take a little um, off the table. Um, Mitch, thanks a lot, yeah. by the way. Mitch Tuckman out uh, joining us uh, throughout the morning, and, and Charles will hang out here because we will go through it this time every morning.